Make this declaration. Say it with me. Hold your Bible up. This is my Bible. It is the living word of God. It never changes. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I boldly declare I will be what it says I should be. I will have what it says I should have. I will say what it says I should say. And I will live how it says I should live. This is the day the Lord has made. Today I receive the miracle power of God through healing, finances, deliverance, family, and forgiveness. I will stand and pray for a biblical nation. I will stand and pray for the nation of Israel. I will stand and pray for all nations. I declare that we are one nation under God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Jesus' name, everybody shouted amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him our best is yet to come. That was phenomenal. Everybody got the victory, say amen. amen. I want to ask you to open your Bibles up real quick. We're going to continue on with the series, Teach Us How to Pray. Open your Bibles up to the book of Luke, chapter 11. And like I've said so many times that you can read this in Luke 11, you can read this in Matthew 6. Matthew 6 is a little bit more in detail. But for today, let's read from Luke uh, chapter 11 and listen to what the Word of God says. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, this is Jesus praying, he ceased and that one of the, his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. Now, I've said this over and over again, but I need to say it for those that maybe haven't heard this or the many, many are watching right now around the world. This is a very Jewish thing that a disciple would come to his rabbi and say, teach us how God has led you to pray. Now, this is very common, but what's the thing that we need to grab a hold of this is, is this is not any normal rabbi. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so when they said to Jesus, teach us how to pray, why did they say this? And, and I said this last night at the meeting we had here, that they didn't say teach us to pray. These are Jews. They were praying. They said teach us how to pray. They were already praying. But they saw something. When Jesus prayed, blind eyes opened. When Jesus prayed, gold coins came out of fish's mouth. When Jesus prayed, the dead were resurrected. And so they said, duh, teach us how to pray. If when you pray, these kind of miracles happen, teach us how to pray. So Jesus says, here's how you pray. He said, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, that's where we're going to start today. We already talked about that we enter in. We always start our day. Say always. always. Say it louder. Always. always. You always start your day, your prayer, your study, whatever, with praise and thanksgiving. We enter in to what Jesus has already done through his blood by praise and thanksgiving. And, and I know you've heard this a thousand times. This is why you start a church service off with praise and worship. Praise and worship is not a time to kill, not, not there to kill time so you can park your car. Praise and worship prepares us. You know, in the old days, a prophet never prophesied without first music being played. And so this prepares our spirit. Think about this. You've been out there all week long battling the devil in so many different ways, standing for the kingdom of God. And so when we come in, we prepare our soil to receive the spirit of God, the word of God through praise and thanksgiving. When we start our day off, we start off with saying, thank you, Lord. We're thanking him for what he's going to do. It's a faith. It's a faith thing. And, you know, when you say it, and, and you know, uh, I know I keep saying this, and, but you need, to, you need to learn. I mean, you can pray anywhere, anytime, but you need to pray out loud when you get a chance. I, I, I start my day off on a thank you, Lord, and I pray out loud. Why? Because you can't think something negative at the same time you're saying something positive. They heard him pray. 
They heard him pray. Faith comes by Literally, that word is an inner ear hearing. Like when you hear, a, when you see our worship team up there and somebody may be trying to harmonize with somebody, they'll put their finger in their ear and they'll hear themselves so they can harmonize with the other ones. When you say what God says, you are harmonizing with what God has already done for you through Jesus Christ. Amen? Then he said, say our father. And we talked about this last week uh, about, he, he said, when you pray, and Jesus called him that, Paul tells us to say this, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, whenever you see two things together, what does it mean? There's a secret. So he says, Abba, which is Western Aramaic, which is the form of, of, of Hebrew that Jesus spoke, Abba means daddy. So we, he says, when you talk to God, you're saying, daddy, he's my, he's my daddy. There's a, it's a different relationship when you understand he's your papa, he's your daddy. You know, uh, 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 it's not like, oh, he's, he's this untouchable God on the throne. He's our daddy. But then he says, Abba, father. And father is a more dignified way so that we understand, yes, he's my daddy, but he is also almighty God. And I need to rep uh, come to him because what Jesus did just come boldly before his throne, but also, as the scripture says, know who it is you're standing before. Amen. He is almighty God. So we have familiarity, but we also have great respect for God. Amen? Amen. Then we talked about thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And, and this is where we want to go again today. It's, uh, uh, it's a term of authority. It's a term of you putting your foot down. Come, kingdom of God. How, how many parents do we have here? Okay. When, have you ever said to your kids, come here? And they ignore you and you go, come here. I don't know about you, but when my mama put her foot down, I'm coming. It's one thing to say, come here. It's another thing. You put your foot down. That's what you're to do when the devil is attacking the blessings of God in any area of your life. Now, now let, me, let me share something. The Bible, Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven does what? Suffers violence. Do you know that word violent in Hebrew is the word Hamas? I, I haven't told you that? Yeah, from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. When, when, just a side note, when Hamas on October 7th attacked Israel, the Torah portion was God speaking to Noah and saying that the world was full of Hamas, full of violence, but God would defeat that Hamas. So when you think about this, and, 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 and we won't get into it too much today, but when you think about from the day, what Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God in your life is going to be violently attacked. The devil's going to attack your marriage. He's going to attack your children. Now, I'm not saying this to be negative. I'm just saying this is a possibility. He's going to attack your marriage, your children, your home, your finances, your, your future, your, your, your health, whatever it is. That's why the Bible says that we battle not with flesh and blood, but we do battle. We do battle. We do battle with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. There's a real Satan out there. Amen? And he does not want the kingdom of heaven, which is joy and happiness and peace and health and prosperity. He does not want that in your life. So he's going to attack. That's why the Bible says that we're to put on the whole armor. Say armor. armor. He didn't say put on a tutu. You know, we don't just come and, and forgive me. I, you know, I know this isn't very pastoral to say it this way, but it's, you're never going to win by going, oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, Jesus. No, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Now, I don't, uh, you all know this, but whenever you read something, there's always, it, it, it always has two parts. 
It has the heavenly and the earthly, the spiritual and the physical. So one way you read that is the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the, but the violent take it by force. One of those things is, is that the devil violently wants to steal from you what Jesus has paid for by his blood. He violently wants to steal that from you. He will do anything. He will do anything to destroy what God wants to do in your life. It doesn't matter. He'll steal. He'll cheat. He'll lie. He'll lie. He'll open the borders. He'll. Uh, he'll get teachers teaching stuff in school. So what do we do? We crawl up in a corner and go, Jesus, help me. The other side of that is the kingdom of heaven will suffer violence. The devil's going to come in and try to destroy. This, listen, this is the greatest nation on the... Uh, let me say this. This used to be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. We can get that back. But we're not going to get it back by going, I sure hope God does something. I sure hope. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence through lies, deceit, deception. But the violent, the other side of it is the violent will take it by force. It's time to take our marriage back, our children back, our schools back, our nation back, our borders back, our, our, our White House back. But that doesn't happen by being passive. That happens by you being more violent in the spirit than the devil is against you. When, when Lion got cancer or Tiz got cancer, I want you to know something. I did not just crawl in a hole and say, please, Jesus. I got angry. You know, the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. In other words, you know, I, m most of you know my testimony. I wasn't raised in church. I was raised in the hood. I was raised in the street. I was raised gang fighting. When I got saved, God didn't take my aggression away. You know, everybody knows that I used to be a heroin addict and a, and a cocaine addict, but my worst thing was my violent temper. I had a violent temper, and I, I got saved with this, brought this into in, 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 in my Christianity, into my marriage, and God delivered me, but I'm still violent. I'm just not violent against people. I'm violent against every single thing the devil tries to do to, to attack my home, to attack my country, to attack you. I am still just as violent. I'm still a street fighter, only the weapons of my warfare aren't carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. The devil, and I shared this last night, the devil got my sin. He didn't get my manliness. You know, and, and I know this is not the pastoral thing to say. I hate it when pastors act feminine. Let's just, let's just all praise the Lord. Now, I'm a man. I'm a man. And let me say this to all you men. You're men, too. And we're watchmen on the wall. David didn't grab a stone and go, get out of here, David. Yeah, Goliath. You big brute, you. Get out of here. Now he picked, you know what David did? And, and, and I think a lot of times we miss this. Yeah, he was going after David, but how many stones did David pick up? Five. Why? Because Goliath had, he's going after the Goliath, but Goliath had four brothers. What he's saying is, I'm going, when I'm coming after you, when I'm done with you, I'm coming after every one of your brothers. And the devil needs to know that. When we come after and we swing the word of God at him, he's not only coming down, but everybody that's hanging around with him, they're coming down too. Listen, we're living in the last of the last days. This is the time of the great outpouring of God's spirit. It's time for God's army. God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is our song with healing in our hand. This is a time for us to understand that we are not to be passive children of God, but we are to be aggressive children of God. Come, kingdom of God. Be done, will of God, on earth as it is in heaven. Time for aggression. When, we, when the Bible says, when we understand, we battle not with flesh and blood, but we do battle with demonic forces. We battle with demonic forces. 
You know, I could, we, could, we could tell you stories over the years and years of what we've seen. But, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. We were, when I was a brand new convert and I was just learning, I was just being discipled by my pastor. We used to go, we had a bunch of churches in Mexico and we go down and do uh, miracle crusades down there. And I remember we were way down in Mexico and one of our Hispanic pastors came and said uh, to my pastor and all the other pastors from the United States, there's like seven or eight of them. And I'm just, I'm just newly saved. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a year or so old in the Lord. I'm just learning. And they said, uh, this young man, he give his life back to the Lord. He used to be a pastor and he's gone back into homosexuality and he wants to get saved. He wants to get delivered. He wants to serve God. So we're standing there and we're in the pastor's office and I'm just in the back and all these senior pastors are there and they begin to lay hands on him. This young man didn't speak a word of English, didn't speak a word of English. And they began to bind the devil that caused him to backslide and lose his marriage and lose his ministry. And all of a sudden, he, and he's praying, he's lived, all of a sudden he lifts his head up and he goes, and he didn't speak a word of English, he goes, I know who you are. And he began to name every pastor. Man, just telling the story makes the hair on the back of my head. And I thought, and you know what? Thank goodness the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Listen, you may never experience something like that, I hope, but you will experience the enemy maybe trying to steal your finances or steal your marriage or steal your children. You've got to understand the kingdom of heaven suffers violent, but the violent will rise up and take it by force. Give I, I love what, uh, what Joshua and Caleb said. You know, the 10 spies came back and said, oh, well, yeah, it's the promised land. Y- do you guys know that Israel wasn't lost for 40 years in the wilderness? They were not lost. It's impossible to be lost. When you come out of Egypt, you've ever gone with us to Israel, you come out of Egypt, you got the Red Sea, you've got the mountains of Jordan, you've got the mountains of Israel, You've got the, 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 the river the, or the water that runs up into the Dead Sea. You can't be lost. As a matter of fact, if you look at the scripture, the Bible says that they sent 10, 12 spies in to spy out the land. A couple of them even went in. They crossed the Jordan. They brought back fruit that was enormous. He it said, it's just like God said, but... We saw giants in the land. Listen, God never said there weren't any giants. He said those giants are going to try to steal your blessing, but if you'll rise up in the name that's above every name, you can take that blessing back. But instead, what did they say? They came back and they said, we saw these giants, and they're bigger than we can imagine, and we are but grasshoppers in our own sight. Because of them, we're grasshoppers. Joshua and Caleb saw the same promised land, saw the same giants. They said, we can take the land. Now, people would say, well, who do they think they are? It's not who they think they are. It's who they know God is. If God can cause the Nile to turn to blood, God can bring boils and frogs and cause Pharaoh to say, let them go. If God can part the Red Sea, if God can defeat the enemy along the way, if God can bring water out of a rock, if God can lead them by fire during the night and a a, a pillar of smoke during the day, that same God can defeat this enemy. And Joshua and Caleb didn't crawl away. They said, give me my mountain. The violent take it by force, you know, and there's ways, you know, when, whatever, whatever, whatever is coming against you, greater is he that's in you than anything that can come against you. Did you hear what I said? Greater is he that's in you than anything that can come against you. I just thought of a story. Tiz and I were pastoring with our family over in Australia, and it's like three o'clock in the morning, and we get a phone call. Do you remember the, the where, what, what's it, was that Adelaide or Melbourne? Adelaide, it was Adelaide. And we get a phone call at three o'clock in the morning, and it's the police. 
And they said, is this Pastor Larry? And we said, yeah. And they said, we have a member of your, uh, of your uh, congregation here. She's a single mom. And somebody just uh, broke into her house and, and tried to attack her and kill her. And she asked us to give you a call. I said, we're on our way. So we went over there and we, and we teach the same thing. We've been teaching the same thing for 50 years and teach you to that you don't bow down. You, 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 you stand up to the devil. Be, have authority in the name of Jesus. And so we walk in there and we found out that this guy had broke into the house and she was in bed. She's a single mom and she put, he put a knife to her throat. And so we're standing there and the, the, the police are all there. They're checking everything. And there's one policeman at the table and she's sitting there at the table with him. And he said, okay, tell me what happened. And so she says, uh, uh, I woke up and he had a knife to my throat. And he goes, I, and he's repeating it back. He goes, I woke up and he had a knife to my throat. And then what happened? She said, I screamed. He said, and then she screamed. And then what happened? She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and he looked at me, he goes, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he said, then what happened? She said, I began to speak in other tongues. <laughs> and he goes, I began to speak. She goes, what does that mean, speak in other tongues? She said, I looked at him and I said, and I looked at his, I said, let's see him write that down. <laughs> Here's a single mom. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, the weapons of our warfare, they are mighty, mighty in God. And, and, and I know this sounds like a cliche, but listen, when you wake up every morning, instead of being afraid of what the devil's going to do to you, the devil needs to be afraid of what we're going to do to him because we're living in the greatest time of the outpouring of God's spirit. Can I have an amen? Now think about this. Think about this. Jesus is walking, and many of you have heard me teach this, but it's, it's such a great illustration. Jesus is walking, and... He turns to them and he says to Peter, who do men say that I am? Who do people say I am? And they said, well, some say you're this and some say you're that. And then Jesus bypasses that and he says, who do you say I am? See, it doesn't matter who they say he is or who your mom says he is, your dad says he is, or your brother says he is, or your neighbor says he is. That doesn't matter. Because according to your faith, be it unto you. So they said, well, some say this, some say that. And then Jesus says something so important. He said, who do you say I am? Who do you, you individually, who do you say I am when the devil attacks your marriage? Who do you say I am when you've lost your job? Who do you say I am when you get the negative report from the doctors? Who do you, see, this is a personal relationship. Who do you say that I am? Jesus was a Jew asking another Jew, Peter, to give an answer. And he gives a Jewish answer. He says, who do you say that I am? And folks, that's so important. When you hear, when you hear the doctor say, you have three months to live. I, I think I can give you three months. When you hear the doctor say, uh, no child's ever survived this kind. When you hear the bank say, you know what, this is, this is going to happen with your finances. At that moment, who do you say he is? Who do you say he is? And you can almost see Peter, who's been with him now for three years, go, oi, gewalt. You're the Christ. Now, most of you know this, and I won't get into it. The word Christ, in, I won't get into it in detail, the word Christ in Hebrew means the anointed one. The anointed one is the one who removes the burden and breaks the yoke. If you remember on Yom Kippur, they didn't bring one sacrifice, they brought two. One was the forgiveness of sin. The other one was if everything went well, the curse would be broken, Satan would be defeated. But there was never a guarantee in Israel. There was always a guarantee sins would be forgiven every year. But there was never any guarantee the enemy would be defeated. So when Jesus says to Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter goes, you're, you're the anointed one. You're the one who will remove the burden, the wages of our sin. 
but you're also the one who will break every curse. Curse is he who hangs on a tree. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, Peter, on this, I will build my church. He said, you didn't get this from man. You didn't get this reading a book. You didn't get this. God gave this to you. And folks, when you get this from God, your life will never be the same again. When you get this, that God will not only forgive us of our sin, but Jesus has come to give you life and life more abundant to break every curse that's trying to attack the blessing and the favor of God in your life. Say every curse. Every enemy. He's come and already defeated it. So he says, you didn't get this from man. God gave you this revelation. And when you get this revelation on this revelation that I will not only forgive sin, but I will defeat every enemy. On this, I will build my church and the gates, the leadership of hell will not win anymore. Now, it doesn't say you won't have a battle. How, how, many, how many, let me ask, I don't want to know any women who's been in a fist fight. How many men? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it as soon as I looked at you. Have you, ever, have you ever been in a fist fight? You don't come home beat up and bloody and go, oh, that was a good fight. No, it's a good fight when you win. It's a good fight when you win. So when we beat the devil, we need to understand he's going to fight. But God has given us a way to fight the good fight and win. So he says, on this, I will build my church and the gates of hell, leadership of hell, won't win anymore. You're going to become more than a conqueror. When it looks like you're losing, you're winning. And he says these words, and I know you've, many of you seen it, but many of you haven't. He said, and I give you the keys to the kingdom. I give you, I give you I give you the keys to the kingdom. Has, has anybody got a set of keys? Can, Paula, can I have a set of keys? What do keys do? Keys open things and keys lock things. Now he says, I give you the keys to the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth, whatever you lock, is locked in heaven. Whatever you open is opened in heaven. Now, that will lead us into next week when he says, give us this day our daily bread. But we've got to watch what we say because so many times what Christians say locks up God's blessing and opens the door for the devil's attack. We'll get into that more. But keys are a symbol of authority, right? I mean, I can remember in school and the janitor would walk around with 400 keys. Man, this guy can open everything. Now, look, look, I need some help. Troy, come and stand with me here. Troy will represent God. And you, you, for those that didn't know God was black, now you know. <laughs> okay, Harold, you come up here. Okay, two. Derek, come up here. Three, four, and five. Come up here and stand shoulder to shoulder. Come down this way. You, look, he's... He, he, no, God's on this end. (laughs) Look at the beginning of creation. In the beginning, God had all the keys, right? He created us, and he passed the keys on us. He said to Adam, I give you all authority and dominion. All authority and dominion. Who's got the authority and dominion? Man does. We do. All authority and and dominion, right? Adam blew it. (laughs) Oh, I didn't pick this. Satan. Now, Satan. (laughs) I don't want any letters. Yeah, give me, we got to start over again. I need a Mexican up here. No, (laughs) I'm a Jew. I'll be, I'll be there. Okay. In the beginning, who had the keys? God. He created us. Who got the keys? We did. We blew it. 
Adam blew it. Satan got the keys. Right? Jesus comes along, stomps on the devil's forehead, steals the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom, right? So Jesus has the keys. Then Jesus says to us, who do you say that I am? We say, you're the Christ. You're the one who will forgive us of our sin and break every attack of the enemy. And he says, on this, I will build my church and the king uh, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Who's got the keys? We say it again. Who's got the keys? We do. And when we understand this, one will send a thousand fleeing, two will send 10,000 fleeing. What will happen when the whole Christian army understands we are not God's little boys and girls, but we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus? Watch out, Satan. Here comes the army of God. Somebody shout amen. Thank you, guys. Now, let me close with this. Let me close with this. And this will lead us into next week when he says, give us this day our daily bread. L- let, me, let me not ruin next week's message, but understand. Give us what day? So if you didn't pray that today, you need to pray it because he has your daily bread ready to release today. If you didn't pray it yesterday, you missed yesterday's blessing. You have not, why? Now remember, this isn't rabbi teaches to pray, pastor teaches to pray, church leader teaches to pray. This is Jesus. Give us this day your, our daily bread. I'll get into it next week, but if you remember when they're going through the wilderness onto the promised land, every day God brought the manna. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't just wait till Tuesday. You got it Sunday. You got it Monday, and I'll, I'll get into that. But l- l- let me prep you for this. Beloved, I would above all things that you prosper and you be in health as your soul does prosper, right? Beloved, I would above all things that you prosper, you be in health, and I'm going to explain that health next week, as your soul does prosper. Let me bait you with this. Number one, you have to understand when we're taking authority, it means authority over sickness. It means authority over uh, the enemy attackers anyway, but it's also loosening. And one of the things in these last days that God is going to loosen is the wealth of the wicked being put in the hands of the righteous. Now, I'm going to offend some of you that are much more holier than I am. Money's not a bad thing. I'm going over to the Presbyterians. Money's not a bad thing. You know what money is? Money's an amplifier. Money's an amplifier. Money does good things. Money amplifies whosoever hands it's in. If, it's, if money's in the hands of a, a, a drug addict, it's amplifying bad things. If money's in the hands of a child of God, we're giving $2 million just to Israel to save lives. We're, we're, we're feeding 50,000 kids a month in Zimbabwe. We're, we're, we're taking care of our orphanages, our feeding programs around the world. Money is a good thing. I need a better amen to that. Huh? I'm, not, I'm not going on. And, and I understand that the prosperity message has been used as a gimmick. I understand that. You know, when the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, if you look at that word in, in Hebrew, it's amazing because one of the violent ways is through deception of God's word. Is we can take God's word and instead of feeding the flock, we can fleece the flock. And that brings a lot of damage to people. I wonder how many people are out of church because they've been damaged in church. But we need to understand that no matter what, God says he wants us to prosper. And we're going to get into that next week. But here's the debate I want to give you. 
Beloved, I would above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. How many have ever heard that before? Have you ever thought about how does our soul prosper? Your soul in Hebrew, and, and we'll get into it in detail, your soul in Hebrew is, is, is your, everybody's soul is two parts. You have the animal soul and you have the godly soul. Now, I'll explain that to you. The animal soul is a soul of self-survival. God put that in you. You see, you see fire coming towards you, you run away. You see uh, uh, somebody uh, break into your house, you, you, you grab uh, chapter 357. <laughs> he's so worldly, he's so worldly. It's human nature to survive. God put that in you, right? You touch something hot, you pull your finger away. That's that. But the animal nature is only caring for itself. You know, I have, I have horses, I have cows, and, and, you know, I have horses that have babies, and they grow up, and, you know, the, the muzzle, the, when you put the food out, it's, you know, I'm getting mine. But mom, that's the animal nature. The godly nature is, you know, I've got some, come here and I'll share this with you. The godly nature is when you don't just care about yourself, God bless me so I can be a blessing. When our godly nature begins to outsize our animal nature in proportion God brings peace to our health, and God brings prosperity to our lives. And we're going to talk about that next week because God says, give me this day my daily bread. And our God is not El Get By. Our God is El Shaddai, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. Can I have an amen? amen? Do you receive that? Would you give the Lord a clap offering? Would you stand with me all over the building? How many understand that when the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth, you know, that's, that, that word meek doesn't mean passive. The word meek in Hebrew means strength under control. Now look at me. The meek shall inherit the earth. Strength under control. How I treat people, how I act, how I talk to folks, how, wh- 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 what do I do in certain situations? I'm still the same Larry Huck in many ways that got saved almost 50 years ago. It's just that aggression is under control and no longer aggression towards the, wor- the people of the world, but aggression towards the kingdom of darkness. We are still to be aggressive. We are meek which is strength under control. You know, the greatest illustration I ever saw with Meek was a horse with a bit in its mouth. You put a bit in a horse, you know, a horse, you know, my horse that, that got injured, he's, he's probably 1,100 pounds, 1,200 pounds. And if he wanted to, there's no way me who weighs 160 pounds There's no way I can control him. He could run me over. But you know something? I can go down here and I go down and pet him. I went down this morning and and laid hands on him before I came to church and he nuzzles me and stuff. But when it's time to ride, I put a bit in his mouth so that I have control. When God puts his bit, his word in our mouth, his spirit in our mouth, we are now strength under control and we go wherever he wants us to go. And that's always in the blessing of God. Amen. I want to. I want to pray. I want to pray for people that we have that authority, that dominion. Is Wanderson here? Come here, Wanderson. I want to. I want to pray for you, John. Come and pray with me, uh, guys. Come and pray with me. God gave me a word on you, brother. I don't know if you all know Pastor Wanderson, but Pastor, you know, in the body of Christ, there are gifts. 
you know, uh, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and we're going to talk about this in the future. There's gifts of healing, gift of prophecy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm going to do a series. On, I told the staff I'm going to do a series on this. And when you're faithful in this gift, he expands it to the next gift, and then expands it to an office. I'll give you an example. God may give you a word of prophecy. If you're faithful to, and you, and you go, people go, wow, that changed my life. If you're faithful to give him all the praise and all the glory, then he can move that prophecy to a gift of prophecy. Now you have a gift of prophecy. If you're faithful in that gift of prophecy, he could move it up to the office of a prophet or prophetess. And this is what God's getting ready to do in the church. Wanderson is one of the most faithful, true pastoral spirits that I've ever met. And God spoke to me that on you and all your life group leaders and everyone that touch you, because you've been faithful in having a heart for the lost, wherever you go, wherever your life groups go, there's going to be signs and wonders and miracles. God said, I will confirm my word. So when you begin to feel, look at me, Wanderson, when you begin to feel you're out, whether you're going to Mardi Gras, and please don't come back from Mardi Gras with all those beads this time. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to say it. When you go to Mardi Gras or you go take our people out in the streets, all of a sudden you're going to feel, you're going to start feeling that supernatural. And that on you is going to overflow onto all those that you're discipling, that you're taking care of. You start watching because all of a sudden the doors of salvation are going to just be a floodgate because God is going to confirm on the streets, in the life groups, uh, wherever you go, he's going to confirm that with signs and wonders and miracles. I am still serving God today because of the miracle power after I got saved to touch my life. Get ready for God to move you and to hold. Lift your hands this way, church, cover, pastor. Father, in the name of, oh, there it is right there. In the name of Jesus, I release the gift of miracles on him. From him overflow onto all those that he's disciple. There it is right there. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Amen. Bruno. Bruno, come here. I want to pray. I want to pray for you. Come, come stand right here. Get, where's Garrick? I saw Garrick earlier. Where's Garrick at? Where, Garrett, where's Garrick? Come up here, brother. I, I want to. I want to pray for you. Dan, come here. I want to pray for you and Emma. I want to pray for both of you. Come up here. Turn facing this way, if you would. Turn facing this way. Come here and pray with me, guys. Bruno, there's. Uh, I saw this when you got up and d d did that service i can't remember how many weeks ago it was and you were up here speaking and stuff like that i saw something and i wasn't going to say it because i saw it but i had to be confirmed in my spirit there is a new anointing coming on you on teaching god's word it will be it it's going to become uh, uh when you're teaching to those that God is drawing in, it's going to become the gift of a word of wisdom and word of knowledge. It's not just going to be a message from the Bible. It's going to be a message from God's throne. And you're going to see young people by the masses. The word is going to come out. You need to come and hear Pastor Bruno speak. You need to hear him come and teach the word of God. And God is going to give you a revival of young people. There's going to become an anointing on you. And through that, God is going to raise up young people for this next generation. Get ready, my brother, for a whole new revelation. You'll be walking and God will say, teach on this. You'll be riding your car and God will say, teach on this. And all of a sudden, it's going to go from God's word in the Bible to God's word from the throne. Lift your hand up. Father, I release a new anointing on my brother right now. Lift him up high. Lift him up real high, real high, real high, real high. There it is right there. In the name of Jesus. Father, I release the power and the anointing of God on my brother. Father, I claim that the anointing of him through the words he speak will be words of living water to young people that it will break through not only in Dallas but from around the world. There it is right there. In Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Come here, my brother.
there's going to become an increase in your life of, of finances and influence. And the reason is, is that God is going to take a, 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 the, 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 you to another level in the area of finances so that you can be free to be more involved with what God is saying around the world. God is saying you're going to be, your finances are going to free you because you're going to be a spiritual influencer in the world that in which you teach. There are people that you will speak to that have never been in church that have a, a, a negative taste of God. You're, two things God does in the last days is end time transfer of wealth and signs and wonders and miracles. God is going to elevate you in, in, in stature financially because he's going to elevate you in stature spiritually. Does that make sense? Lift your hands up and receive this. Father, right now, lift your hands, church, and receive. Let me, let me say something as we pray. If I give someone a word and you feel quickened in your spirit, you lift your hands up and say, I receive that in my life. All right, man? Because God is no respecter of persons. Father, I release this right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I release favor with God, we know, but oh, there it is right there. I release favor with man in Jesus' name. Father, I release the financial freedom to release him into spiritual authority. Wherever he goes, he's placing the sole of his foot. You will give it to inheritance to the kingdom of God. Everything he puts his hand on, Father, you're going to cause it to prosper. Father, lives will be changed as you release him into this destiny in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering of praise. When I looked at uh, when I looked at him, I looked saw you guys up there, and God immediately spoke to my to my voice. The devil has. Uh, uh, you ever see uh, like the Kentucky Derby or a, a, a horse race, and the horses are in the gate. Okay, and all of a sudden, boom, it goes off and the horses go running. But every time, every once in a while, one of the, one of the favorites is stuck in the gate. And when I looked at you, God, I saw this in the image. The devil has had your gate locked, but that gate is going to burst open financially and spiritually. It's going to burst open. And it may look like I'm starting at the end of the path, but here comes Dan and Emma. They're coming around the bend. Here comes Anna, they're in Dan and Emma, they're in the lead. And, and your end is gonna be so phenomenal that it will not only bring that blessing financially and spiritually to you, but you'll be able to use this as a sign to others. Get ready, the gate is about to open and you're gonna run and you're gonna win this race beyond anything you've ever imagined. Does that make sense to you? Lift your hands up this way. How many receive that for yourself? Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I release, I give, I release the favor of God and the favor of man on them. Father, give Dan uh, inventions, give him uh, uh, understanding, give him the open doors. Father, we remove every burden of heaviness off of Emma and on their home, we release them into their God-given destiny. And we praise you. Everything the devil has stolen comes back multiplied by seven in Jesus' name. You know what? You know what? God just spoke to me. And as I was saying, everything the devil has stolen, I, and I don't, you know, if this doesn't make sense, then it doesn't make sense. But God said, what's, what's one, of the th one of the things that's been blocking that is somehow you feel like you made a mistake or you failed or, or, or something, something. And, and God says, no, 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 you need a, 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 does that make any sense to you? What sa God says, what Satan meant for evil, I use it for good. Okay, he may have, he may have stole our joy or he may have stole our, our finances or whatever he's stolen. But when we understand it's not because of us, it's because he, he's the king, he's Hamas. Now we know that, so everything that he stole now comes back multiplied by seven. Let me ask you something. How many need sevenfold restoration in your life? Do you need that? I, I do. I do. Can, 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 now, stay there with me. Now, let me. Let me help you with this, and anybody that's watching, I made a major mistake. There was a time that Tiz and I, a friend of ours, invented the Bowflex machine. And we made, Tiz and I made $12 million overnight made $12 million. And so I decided I was going to leave the ministry. 
And everybody said, no, no, that's not the thing to do. And I, we we're just starting to stand with Israel and stuff. I said, no, you know what? I got $12 million. What do I need? I got on an airplane. God spoke to me. And he said, you're, you're anointed to be a priest, not a king. Now, we're all anointed to be kings and priests. And I'll share that. We're all anointed to be kings and priests. But our main job is, my main job is a priest. Now, I'm the king of our finances. and I can, The king brings the provision. The priest brings the vision. But I was stepping out of my measure of faith, and I decided I'm just going to be a king. I'm not going to be a priest. And so God said, well, I'll remove those $12 million stumbling blocks. And so when that happened, people, I tell the story, and people say, aren't you devastated? No, because I know it's the devil who did that. And so I'm going to someday get it back multiplied by seven. And so what Satan meant for evil, how many need restoration? Your fault, the devil's fault, nobody's fault. Our God is a God of restoration. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, overflowing. Do you receive that? Lift your hand. Father, we speak restoration on all of us right now. In the name of Jesus, we release this. We bind every force of darkness that comes against your people. We bind every hindering, every stalemate. And, oh, oh, there it is right there. And we loosen the favor of God and man in Jesus' name. If you're ready for restoration, give the Lord a great big clap offering of praise. Come here, come up here, both of you, come up here. Did you serve in Vietnam? As I looked over you, God, God spoke to me and he said, you came back from Vietnam. I don't know if you came back physically injured, but you came back emotionally injured. And God said, the recognition that you did not, and ever, any other Vietnam vets in here? Any other Vietnam, raise your hand if you're a Vietnam vet. Okay, okay. The recognition, so you, every one of you rec Vietnam vets. Now this is for all vets, but this is for Vietnam vets. The recognition you, you did not get for being a hero to our nation because the Vietnam War was, was, was uh, bad mouth. God said, I'm gonna raise you up. I'm gonna raise you up spiritually and financially and you're gonna get the recognition that Satan stole when you came back from saving our country and the world. Everything the devil stole is coming back to you. Every Vietnam vet, raise your hand if you're a Vietnam vet. Somebody put hands on them, male and female. Somebody lay hands on them. Somebody lay hands on them. Do you understand? Maybe the young people don't understand. When the Vietnam vets came home, they were spit on, they were called baby killers. While they were over there sacrificing their lives so that we could have one nation under God and we could have closed borders. And not 10 million military age young men coming in this year. 10 million. Okay, they didn't come back and get the honor that they were due. God, every one of you, lift your hand up. Somebody put your hands on them. Put your hands on them. Every one of you, God is going to lift you up spiritually and financially and give you. I've, I've never given this word. John, I don't think I've ever given this word before. Tis, I don't think I've ever given this word before. Lift your hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release financial honor. We release emotional honor. We release spiritual honor. Father, raise every one of these men and women up every one of them into leadership in the kingdom of God, into leadership in kingdom finances. Oh, there it is right there. In Jesus' name, I speak every emotional scar healed, and God, we release them into the name and the power of Almighty God in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering of praise. I told the staff the other day, I said, when I first came to Dallas, God said, it's not time to move in the gifts. And I feel like that gift, that door has opened up. You have to build the church on the word of God. But God said, I'll confirm that word with signs and wonders and miracles. So I wanna ask you to do something. Every service, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to preach about 30, 35 minutes. And then at the end, moving the gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. So I want you to pray that God would release the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives. Amen.
Uh, I got, I got, I, I'm still saved today because somebody called me out and gave me a word and it didn't know me from Adam and gave me a word. I'm still saved today. And so I believe the church is going into a whole nother realm and it's for such a time as this. So I'm going to let you go a little bit early today because the Cowboys are in the play. No. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Before we pray, first off, what time? Five o'clock in the lobby. Young, what's it called? Say it out loud. Waves, 30 to 30, 20 to 30. And we're serving, what are we serving? Cacanha, which is Brazilian meat, which I'm going to pass as a 30-year-old to come to that. And so all you young people, listen, we going, God, it's time to raise up our young adults. We're going we're gonna to take, take our children and raise them up through the children's ministry to dovetail into the youth ministry. We're going to take the youth, disciple them, raise them up into the young adults ministry so that if the Lord gives us a few years, those young adults will, will dovetail into leaders in the kingdom of God. Get ready. God's allowed to release you into a whole new dimension of anointing in your life. It's time to raise up leaders. Amen. So we got that tonight at five and and you're all invited. And then our Brazilian mission interest trip. You can see Pastor Wanerson in the lobby, Pastor. Where at? In the New Beginnings room right over here. If you want to go, I'm going to be doing a conference in Brazil. Brazil's an amazing place. Uh, It's, you know, I can't say anything bad about Brazil except JP. That's all. That's all. So we're going to do a missions trip down there. I'm going to go with you. So if you're interested, come see Pastor Wanderson. How many want the anointing of authority? Lift your hands this way. Lift your hands this way. I hope this is okay to say to you. If you sit, whether here or through the media, if you sit under our ministry, you have a right to a double portion of the anointing. Tis, come up here, baby. You have a right to a double portion of our anointing. It's really time for God's army to raise up and for you to walk in that anointing of signs and wonders and miracles and end time transfer of wealth. You want to pray? You want me to pray? Lift your hands this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I bind every force of darkness that would come against your people. I bind that lying spirit that says we're not worthy, that we're not good enough, that we're not holy enough, that we don't pray enough. And I release the revelation that we are not God's little boys and girls, but through Jesus and his name and his blood, we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And Jesus says, as my father sent me, he's sending us. And we're to go out in the world. We're to raise the dead. We're to cast out devils. We're to speak the word of God. And God, you will confirm that word with signs and wonders and miracles. And Father, I'm not ashamed to say that includes being blessed in our finances, that you're not the God of just enough. You're the God of more than enough. Now look at me. Look at me. You need to come. Next Sunday, I'm going to brainwash you. But I'm going to wash you in the blood of the Lamb. And we've got to get out of this this church poverty mentality. Not in a gimmick, but one of the promises of the end times is signs, wonders, and miracles, right? We're We're not going home with a moan. We're going out with a shout. But one of the other signs, one of the other signs is the end time transfer of wealth. When Israel walked out of Egypt, they did not walk out. I love the Ten Commandments. I love the Charlton Heston, but they're all coming out in rags and dragging a half dead goat. No, no, they left with the wealth of Egypt. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm gonna prove to you by the word of God, that you're anointed by God to gain wealth. 